This is Pontiac, Michigan. It's about an hour, uh, a half hour drive north of Detroit. General Motors used to build the cars called Pontiacs here. They named Pontiac the car after Pontiac the city, uh, back when they were still making them. General Motors used to build trucks in Pontiac too, but that's over now. They moved that work to Indiana. The NFL's Detroit Lions used to play football in the Pontiac Silverdome, but the Lions left Pontiac in the Silverdome in 2002. So this is Pontiac now, and frankly, Pontiac is broke. Uh, in 2009, the state took over Pontiac and installed an emergency manager whose mission was to balance the books in that city. A few months into his tenure, the emergency manager decided to sell the Pontiac Silverdome, sell it to a guy from Canada. When they built this stadium in the mid-1970s, the Silverdome cost about $55 million. When they sold it in 2009, the price they got for it was just over half of $1 million. The year after they sold their silver dome, Pontiac got another emergency manager, a guy named Michael Stampfler. The way Mr. Stampfler tells it, he arrived in Pontiac to find a city hall with empty rooms and empty files, the computers outdated, the whole place just a mess. He says the city was unable or unwilling to collect the money that it was rightfully owed. He says the police department seemed to him to be corrupt. Several months into his tenure, Michigan Republicans souped up and made way more powerful the emergency manager law, giving managers like Michael Stampfler essentially unilateral control of their cities. With the Republicans' new version of the law, an emergency manager can rewrite contracts, can strip all power from elected officials. The emergency manager can do anything they want, pretty much, without asking anybody else. So in Pontiac, Michael Stampfler studies the city finances. He looks closely at the situation and he writes a budget letter. This is from June of last year. He says property values have fallen sharply. The property tax base is down 21% from the year before and people are not paying what they do owe. And to make matters worse, the state's changed the law about sharing tax money with Michigan's towns and cities. So Pontiac is going to get 32% less money from that source. And the town's population has dropped by 10%, which means even less help from the state. Plus tax money from the county is down down 80 percent, leaving the city on the hook for a couple million in debt. And you add all of this up on one side of the ledger, and it turns out if Pontiac, Michigan were to lay off every single person paid out of the city's general fund, and as an emergency manager, you could do that. If you fired everybody, if you eliminated the whole town payroll, Michael Stampfler calculated that Pontiac would still be in the red. They would still be in deficit by over a million dollars, even with nobody working for the town. So even with all the power Michigan Republicans had given him, even with unilateral authority to ignore the city's founding charter and do anything he wanted, even with the power to be a dictator in that particular American city, Michael Stampfler found that he could not fix Pontiac's budget. Instead, uh, he proposed that Pontiac give up. He proposed that Pontiac commit municipal suicide. Pontiac should just cease to be a city, just merge it into the county as if it were an unincorporated non-place. That was Michael Stampfler's tenure as the guy to whom the state gave Pontiac, Michigan, to run as he pleased. That's how that went. Last year, Pontiac got a new emergency manager, one who has joked about himself as the tyrant in Pontiac. He says he thinks Pontiac is getting better. He says he thinks the city's troubles are just about over, for what that's worth. Before this new, ha-ha, I'm the tyrant guy became the emergency manager in Pontiac, he used to be the emergency manager in another Michigan city, a place called Hamtramck. He left there in 2006. He said the books were balanced, mission accomplished, done and dusted. He took care of it. How has Hamtramck held up since then? Well, this is the Hamtramck newspaper today. The Hamtramck Review, quote, is the city facing a financial doomsday? Answer, yes. Quoting the act acting city manager there, make no mistake, we are at a doomsday scenario. If a bank or the state won't bail them out, the man manager says that Hamtramck, Michigan, could end up with another emergency manager, and that one might decide to just kill the city, just take it right off the map. Then there's Ecorse. How about the city of Ecorse, Michigan? That city was under state supervision from 1986 all the way up to the year 2000. How did that decade and a half of state control do for fixing things in Ecorse, Michigan? Well, now Ecorse has got another emergency manager. Then there's the city of Flint, Michigan, the buckle of the Rust Belt. Flint went broke a decade ago and got fixed supposedly by an emergency manager, but after that, Flint also went broke again, and now it has another emergency manager. Then there's Highland Park, Michigan, a city basically inside Detroit that spent the whole decade of the 2000s under emergency management. Heck of a lot of good that did them. The state just took over the school district in Highland Park, too. It has been the argument of Michigan state government that in order to fix cities, in order to fix towns, you have to first remove the local democracy. 
I mean, not just state help, not just state supervision, but completely unfettered control in one unelected person's hands. It's their argument that the elected officials, the choices of the voters, they get in the way. For Michigan officials, democracy is part of the problem. Get rid of democracy, they say, and then you can fix a town. But these towns that the state's been taking over, the towns where the state has uprooted the democracy, they are not fixed. Last week, a guest on our show, the Reverend David Bullock of Detroit, uh, made a counterproposal. If you want to help Detroit, Flint, Benton Harbor, Saginaw, if you want to help the cities in Michigan, let's deal with foreclosure. 90,000 foreclosures in the city of Detroit. That's 90,000 forced evictions in the last three years. And so if you look at 300,000 people leaving one city, you're seeing the tax base leave. So this city is not in financial strain because of mismanagement, because people are incompetent. That is not the right analysis. So we have to deal with foreclosure. We've got to deal with insurance redlining. Uh, and so what the state should be doing is helping to uh, the federal government, county government, and state government to reinvest in these cities. Uh, we, Michigan is a manufacturing state, really, really a one industry state. And so as the automotive industry, we saw manufacturing melt down. We saw plants go from Michigan to Mexico. So that, that's trade policy. This is, this is not incompetence but as that's in Detroit. Coming, is democracy the problem? Is it just that the bad people of Detroit are making bad choices when they vote, when they put people in charge of running their city? Could Detroit somehow be an oasis in Michigan if only its elected officials had miraculously done a better job of fending off one of the greatest industrial collapses ever seen in Western history, followed by the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression? With the state now in control of its finances, Detroit is facing huge budget cuts. The fire chief says they might just have to let the empty buildings in Detroit burn when they catch fire. So the plan now is you cut money for police and firefighters and you just let some of the buildings burn. You slash city services and then what? You sit back and watch families decide to move to your city and businesses race in to invest in the town where there aren't enough police and the fire chief just says some of the stuff is we're just going to leave it to burn? In recent weeks, Pontiac's former emergency manager has become something of a whistleblower about Michigan's radical emergency manager law, the law that does away with your right to vote for your representatives at the local level. Michael Stampler gave a speech in Wyandotte, Michigan last week in which he said it doesn't make sense to try to save these towns by neutering, by, by rendering moot, by doing away with the means by which most towns are supposed to work and solve their problems. He says that an emergency manager must work toward building up the social capital, building up the democracy of the town if the town's going to survive after an emergency manager guy like him leaves. You turn the city back to, to a sort of a void. They haven't been part of the process for all these years that they've been taken over by the state. And it just seems to me an awfully tough road to hold. After his speech last week, the Michiganders who were in the room listening to the speech, uh, they built up a little democracy themselves by telling Michael Stampler what they think of Michigan's get rid of local democracy radical law. Abraham Lincoln, coincidentally a Republican, is famous for saying that in America we have a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Does it bother you? that we basically are flushing the idea down the toilet. Voters take a hit, unions take a hit, workers take a hit, democracy takes a hit, everybody takes a hit, but at the risk of sounding like a 99 percenter, Wall Street gets a free ride. What did you think that our charter meant to your job in our city? Uh, the charter is just maybe interesting reading. I can remember my grandfather fighting from Mississippi for the right to vote. We believe in voting. I've always voted. And to come in and to take away people's rights to vote, and even if you say, you know what, we do need emergency financial manager. But to come in and not let any community people make any decisions, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Michigan, you may or may not like this law, but it looks like you could be stuck with it for a while. On Thursday in Michigan, as we reported, an elections board voted to stop an effort to repeal the law. The board split along partisan lines, Republicans saying the font size on the petitions against the law might be too small. They threw out the signatures of more than 200,000 Michigan voters who had signed those petitions, enough signatures to stop the emergency manager law right now until voters could decide on it in November. That case, whether that law can be stopped, is now headed for court. This Michigan story keeps getting bigger and I think more unsettling. 
Michigan is wrangling with a deeply, deeply radical contention that we should not necessarily govern in America using a system called democracy anymore. In Michigan today, they are trying out getting rid of the system by which we vote for elected officials to represent our interests to solve our problems. Whether or not you think democracy is something we should scrap in America, whether or not you think democracy is something we maybe have outgrown, it should probably inform our debate about that. That Michigan Republicans proposed replacement for democracy is not working in Michigan.